Hey, welcome to Live from Dennis's House. Today we have Ian Lloyd from the band Stories, one of my favorite singers, and I'm sure yours as well. Uh, of course, the Stories had the number one hit back in the early 70s with uh, Brother Louie. Brother Louie, of course, was the first song about interracial love, and uh, it was everywhere during the 70s. And uh, we're going to talk to Ian now. Uh, he, you know, his voice is so distinct. As soon as you hear his voice, you know, oh, that's uh, Ian Lloyd from Stories. He was compared with uh, other raspy singers at the time. But uh, Ian had a very powerful voice, still sounds awesome to this day. So we're going to find out everything that he's been doing since uh, 1972 up till today. So uh, let's take a little break. We're going to play some music, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk to Ian Lloyd from the story. On the phone with us today is the great Ian Lloyd, one of my favorite singers and one of the most distinct voices in the business, and of course, lead singer of the band Stories. He's going to be at the Brighton Bar Friday, September 23rd in Long Branch, New Jersey, so be sure to check that out. And now we're going to find out everything there is to know about Ian and find out what he's been up to, what he's up to right now and everything there is to know. So let's start from the beginning. So now, Ian, you are a nice Italian kid born in Seattle, Washington. And That's I correct. always thought you were British, though. How did that, why do I always think that? <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a multitude of reasons. <laughs> for, uh, uh, first of all, just as far as the Seattle goes, uh, it is my birthplace, and my relatives and mom are out there, but I never lived there. I literally was on a plane as soon as they would allow an infant on the plane to fly back to New York. So, oh, I was wondering. Yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. you about that too. But like, so you're sure you're not British, right? That uh, you're definitely not uh, British. Definitely not British, but I am definitely an Anglophile. And you know, we're talking early '70s. Um, you know, we're coming out of the British invasion, which affected me and my music and all my influences greatly. So, right. you know, that's part of it. Uh, and and um, although Brother Louie was the big hit, uh, if you listen to the album that Brother Louie's on, it's a lot different than Brother Louie musically. Right, and that's right. because my co-writer, Michael Brown, from the Left Bank, Walkway Renee, and I were Anglophiles and, you know, heavily influenced by Beatles and the melodies and the chord changes and the way they would write. Right. sections and bridges and stuff like that. You yeah, know? So, so, so a lot of people thought I was British. And, <laughs> and you know, I had the Rod Stewart thing and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. in the 70s, platform, you know, <laughs> platforms, bell bottoms, velvet, satin, so, yes. you know, purple hair. I mean, that, yeah, that's that's <laughs> what, you know, because I was, uh, I remember seeing you guys on uh, the Midnight Special. I was like nine or something. And I was like, oh, these guys are the coolest. I love this song. Oh, I love this voice. <laughs> This is Thank awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was a tremendous time. And, you know, I mean, especially when you see what's, what kind of happened, pop thing is happening today, it was, it was really, uh, it was great. It was, I'm so glad that I could have that success and be part of that whole time period, you know? Yeah. So now I, I read that you were classically trained in piano and violin. Yeah, um, actually, yes. Um, all of which is long gone. Oh, you still don't <laughs> but, play? <laughs> you know, you got to play those things. Uh, you know, like 50 years later. But yeah, my, my, my mom uh, was a lyric sopranist and, and um, performed with Boulez. And my father was professional violinist. He's one of the string players and toured with Sinatra. On, wow. and, and, did, and he's on one of the string players on Strangers of the Night, Strangers in the Night. And uh, he's also uh, one of the string players on um, Walls and Bridges. I actually wow. got a, an autograph for a little, little you know, doodle from John Lennon oh, uh, when man. my dad was doing that session. And, you know, so, so uh, I basically was learning, you know, the basic music through that. And I think a lot of my singing prowess came from just, because I never took lessons, was just listening as a child, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six years old to my mom warming up to do her next recital. Kind wow. of thing. So, you know, so, you know, that, that's, that was my training. I, I obviously would have rather played gone out and played baseball than <laughs> practice the violin which i did a lot but <laughs> you yeah. know I'm, I'm a big baseball fan so oh yeah what's your team well i mean we, i live in new york city <laughs> there were no i love the mess but there were no mets when i grew up I, we, I went i went yankee all the way all right you know? that's what i was hoping I'm to hear i'm excited about their future <laughs> yes it's a great future move too. something's happening there it's crazy yes. brilliant 
So you now, <laughs> let me. Uh, we'll get back to like your your influences. Uh, like you said, you uh, you. I'm sure you love the Beatles and all of that stuff growing of up. Course. What was your main mm-hmm. influence? What was my main influence? Yeah. yeah, like who was your favorite band growing up as a kid? Was it the Beatles, Stones, whoever? Oh, well, it was obviously the Beatles, but you know, I grew up. I, I was cognizant long before 1965, so I grew up as a child. I mean, listening to. Frankie Avalon, Venus. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the specific Sam Cooke. Um, you send me. I mean, this is like as a kid listening to these right. uh, becoming hits on the radio. Uh, in that that whole time period, Danny and the Juniors at the hop. Oh my god! And it's like rock and roll is here. It will never <laughs> die, baby. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how I live. That's how I believe. Uh. Even to this day, I occasionally <laughs> will quote will quote Danny of Danny and the Junior. <laughs> if he wrote it, I don't know. But but also, you know, I, I as I mentioned earlier, my dad was a professional violinist. He was also a heavy session man. So okay. I was there at the Lion Sleeps tonight while he was doing string parts. Oh, nice. You know, by the tokens, the original. I, I was there for it's my party, Leslie Gore in the studio listening. You know, is it that is probably I don't know how old I was, ten or twelve. So you know what I mean? So oh, that yeah. stuff was intense because that's you know i was wake i was growing up with rock and roll growing up and by the time i got to uh, college and you know high, end of high school that was the beginning of the british invasion and personally it was just the most exciting thing in my life because the music was so advanced and so different and yet heavily influenced by all the things that I grew up with, yet a whole new genre. So let's, let's talk a little bit about stories and Brother Louie. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure you've talked about it a million times, but I don't personally know the story, and I know pretty much everything. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> so now you formed the stories, like you said, with Michael Brown from the Left Bank, Walk Away, mm-hmm. Renee, Pretty Ballerina. Now, yep. uh, how did you guys get together? Where did you meet and uh, get together? Okay, um... Well, the the basic uh, story is uh, my dad and his dad were professional violinists doing that se- doing session work. Ah. So we all knew each other through that. Hey, the hot chocolate wrote the song, uh, Brother Louie. And then, how did you guys come? Who brought it to you and said you guys should do this version? Yeah, uh, you know it's crazy because um, it's so long ago, and I've always I, I think. There were there were a couple of things happening simultaneously that led me to that song. One, for better or worse, the record company because the album was done. About us was done, and Brother Louie was not on the album. Right. You know that? So there are copies out there that, unfortunately or not, have stickers that say "include the hit Brother Louie." Right, right. But the, Brother Louie wasn't on there. The last yeah. line of the album is what comes after, which is kind of how the, the whole album was made with you know it was like a complete album a record now, company let me said, interrupt for a second a that I, mm-hmm. I heard a funny story that you were telling that you used to carry 45s around because people oh, yeah. would be complaining so much and hand them out oh, to yeah. people <laughs> yep that's true we had uh you know we brought a couple of boxes of 45s with us and you know we were stories and myself we were very uh open and people could you know, it was the 70s, so, you know, there was a the horror that we have to deal with today. You know, I'd let people would come back. If you had enough initiative to get backstage, great, man. I'll talk to you. I'll sign an order, or whatever, you know. Yeah. And and I found that a lot of the people hadn't, so we eventually just carried. I, I remember, I might have told this time many times, I don't know. I remember, I think it was like Tulsa, Oklahoma. We were playing under a tent at a... Um, uh, maybe like a festival fair, how a fairground type thing. And um, I remember at one point I was uh, kind of like frisbeeing copy, <laughs> <laughs> and I realized after that I could I could have hurt someone. <laughs> you know, I wasn't doing it like you know hard, but yeah, right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, do you recall what the recording session was like, and how you felt uh, the first time you heard it on the radio, and when it became a huge hit? Uh, yeah. Well. Brother Louis uh, was it, it, it was you know it's kind of it's a whole vague thing in my head. Um, <laughs> the, the song I, I was looking for material, outside material, to add, find that one song to add to about us, and it obviously it became Brother Louis. Uh, and I uh, one of the songs that crossed the desk I was with uh, I've been working with the A and R 
people at Buddha in the offices there. And uh, I heard a bunch of different demos and tapes, and back then, you know, 45 demos and stuff back in the 70s. And when that came across, I went, man, that's the one. That sounds like a hit. That chorus, that, that hook is in mm. seconds. So that was like a, a thing. But at the same time, the... The, my other bandmates, because Michael was gone, Michael had left the band, so it was like the drummer and the guitarist, Steve Love, Brian Midday, and I think Kenny Aronson, who replaced me uh, for Brother Louie, I was the bass player as well as the lead singer on, on all the okay. first two albums, excluding Brother Louie. Uh, they, I, unbeknownst to me, were hired to do a session that comprised of them, you know, like maybe three, four hour session where they did as many, recorded as many songs as they could, 10, 12 songs, for Exuma, the artist named Exuma, E-X-U-M-A, I think, who uh, was also on Buddha. He was this black dude, and he had like bells and stuff all over his ankles and wrists and stuff. <laughs> and he was, it was very weird stuff. I, I'm not even sure what kind of, what category it was. In. Yeah, right. Brother Louie was one of, an unbeknownst to me. Brother Louie was one of those songs that uh, they were tracking. So basically, because they were trying to get as many songs, so that that track that ended up being the track was a one take. You know, they just one, two, three, four, boom, oh, boom, nice. boom, you know, and yeah. they moved on to the next song. Well, I came in and sang a bunch of stuff, and Brother Louie was one of them, and they were also one take, and that was pretty much it. So awesome. basically a one take song, you know, we obviously in overdubbed organ with some of that organ. Actually, there's a version of it where the song goes out with the organ happening and it's not on the record. Uh, and I don't know where that, that's out there somewhere. People oh, nice. looking for an alternate brother Lewis, but hot chocolate, I believe in vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> they were so pissed, man. You know, brother Louie was going to be their breakout in America. Right. And you know, we, theirs was out it was had been out in England and probably number one for a while right. it was produced by the great Mickey Most who produced a lot of the great uh, 70s uh, English acts and um, they were not happy because they released it in America right? probably I guess around the same time as us and we just went bang you know, oh yeah the number one and, and that was yeah but they got uh, paid for it if they wrote it well, they made a lot of money. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. But I'm poor. <laughs> They're rich. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know that's, overrated. To this day, it's still one of my favorite songs. Every time I hear it on the radio, I turn it up, and I just love that song. Now, it's just 99.9% of the people in the entire world will never have a hit song, let alone a number one song. So that's something no one ever can take away from you. That's a great feat, and uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, you know, that, that song had a lot of special meaning. I mean, first of all, I, there were death threats on our tour. Oh my God. We played certain areas of the South, getting to, alluding to, which everyone knows, she was black as the night and Lou right. was whiter than white. And back mm. then it was worse than it is now, I guess. I'm not sure. It's, it's totally confused today. But, you know, a lot of people, that was that, that was an important song. That song, I, I was one, if not the first, to cross into the R&B billboard charts. Oh, okay. Like, there weren't a lot, if any, white artists in the top, R and B. I think it was like a top twenty, and you know you had the top hundred Billboard that was everything, and then you broke it down country charts and Billboard. So that was that was uh, something very special. Uh, a lot of uh, fans, a lot of fans thought I was Rod. I remember getting emails from I'm Rod Stewart's biggest fan, and I know that that's you, Rod, <laughs> singing that song. Yeah, like, <laughs> thank you. I love Rod Stewart. Too. Yeah, Rod Stewart's great, I mean, but your voice is so like distinct. Terry Reed, Rod Stewart, Robert Plant, uh, John Anderson. Pre- pre- you know, sure, I'll take a compliment anytime. But more interesting for me and, and helpful for me in my career is besides, you know, playing with Foreigner and, and all these great albums that I'm on, uh, was that song over and over again appeared in different movies, soundtracks. Okay. In the eight, 90s, mostly. I, mean, I think there was uh, there's a, at least four, if not five, different usages. One was Dick, which was a comedy about Richard Nixon, oh, okay, which was yeah. no comedy <laughs> back in, you know, whatever. You know. Uh, another one, like, I'm not going to be able to remember them all now. Another one was... Um, Robert Downey Jr. was in some crazy, serious love drama that won awards but was not a success. 
and it was in the uh, I just can't remember. I feel you have to Google me, and you know, or Google right, right. Uh, And um, there were a couple of others. Oh, one was uh, oh, big one, big one. Guess who? Bernie Mac and Austin Kutcher. Oh, Kutcher. okay. Uh, the scene that I was in, it was not just in the movie. I was part of that scene. He's uh, 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 the um, Bernie Mac's driving. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, they're driving down the road, and there's some drizzling going on, you know, on the windshield. And there's a little part uh, repartee about she turned the windshield wiper on, and Bernie goes, "I know how to drive. I, I don't need it." Blah, blah, blah. So they try to cut the tension, and he turns the radio on. And the first song you hear is, <laughs> she was back. And he looks at her, he looks at him, cause sure, you know, and he quickly turns the station to another radio station, <laughs> to which you hear, do, 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 which is Lou Reed, you know, it's like, right, so, right. I mean, it was like, man, I was part of that comedy. Oh, thing. that's <laughs> funny. You know, that was awesome. And, and I'll just, I just, I'll just want to wrap the Louie thing up. And you will hear it when you come see me on um, Friday, awesome. uh, September 20th. Um, uh, with a little special guest I have, it's going to get up. But in any event, uh, uh, the, the crown for me, a uh, crowning moment is uh, Louis C.K. called yes. me up. Uh, Ian, you have to do me a favor. We recorded the hook. We recorded the hook of the song. We can't get anybody to sing it that sounds anything like what we want, which is you, <laughs> Willie. And I said, yes. Oh, so you re-recorded it? No, they re Reggie Watts engineered, I assume, produced. Yeah, just a chorus. Just, okay. You know, extended chorus. And uh, they called me in, and I went in that afternoon, bing, bang, boom, and yes. out the door. Yes, That's I what saw you hear, uh, Louis C.K. theme song. Yes, awesome. That's a great show, great song. So now let's let's talk about after stories. They're only around for a short time, and then you had a solo career after that. A lot of great stuff. And uh, one song that I really loved was uh, "Slip Away," which was a top forty hit. Um, and Rick Ocasek, you worked with him on that. How did that come along? Uh, yeah, well, that's all. Uh, that that would have been the Goosebumps album, which was, I think, my third solo album, and after stories. And that's a great album. I mean, I have so many people that are famous on that record. Uh, you you have to just you know look at it and and check out the credits. But um, you know, I I was involved at the beginning of Foreigner. I brought Mick Jones from Spooky Tooth and Ian McDonald from King Crimson and brought them into the studio to work on my first solo album after Stories, and that subsequently became a uh, foreigner, you know, right, those right. two guys went on. So, so Mick and I were, you know, close and, and are good friends. And, um, he played on some of the songs on Goosebumps and other albums too, but he was some of the guitar, lead guitar stuff on that album. And, uh, you know, I was looking for more material for the record and he said, look, you know, I, I've been talking with Rick Ocasek, they're in the studio and they're, they've had, they have a, a bunch of demos they sent me. They, I they think maybe there were, I, I might be wrong on this. I think maybe they were, the cars were thinking about maybe Mick producing because, you know, Mick went out and produced the Billy Joel. I go to extremes, uh, which I sing on. Right, you sang on that record. too. You can hear my voice and that's another top chart. Uh, so anyway, he, he got me, and I actually just recently found the cassette or the cassette <laughs> In the uh, in my one of my piles at home, uh, and there was, there was maybe eight or ten songs that the Cars had written. I don't know if any of them were ever recorded and put out on the records. I, I don't know, but one of them was "Slip Away," and I just I jumped on it and did that. And uh, we had Rick and Ben Orr come down and sing the backgrounds with me. That slip, slip, <laughs> you know, <it's> just <laughs> classic. Uh, I, you know, immediately identifiable voices. I have a, I have a segment. Uh, I start the set I'm going to do without giving away too much is we're going to start out with vintage stories tracks from the, all three albums, the first okay. album, uh, and then um, about us, and then traveling underground. We're going to start with that, and then I'm going to go into a segment of hits that'll include um, I'm slip, slip away and a couple of the other you know Mammy Blue and I'm coming home, a first hit, and also some Foreigner. Oh, nice! Songs that yeah. I sang on, you know, and say backing vocals, but you know, sang that I appear on. So, the, and then we're going to go into the the uh, more contemporary. Uh, you know, we're going to end the set with 
my uh, tra- tracks from uh, In the Land of Eau de Paul. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you talk about that album. Now you said uh, it. I, I actually I read it won like some marijuana award or something. The title track in the land of Eau de Po was voted and won best hard rock track at the marijuana musical global marijuana music awards. Wow. <laughs> which is like I, I just recently pulled it out of my case and showed uh, my guitarist because he's oh you know, oh you marijuana I said here man look and I held it up so <laughs> like, in the land of Eau de Po, I was like you know I I. Uh, I'm like I look like Willie Nelson, I guess. And I, <laughs> coming from the same uh, same bus, put it that way. <laughs> We're on the same bus. Okay? Uh, but um, yeah, so you know, the, in the land of Eau de Poe is very special to me. To you know, I have that after everything else I've done to have that award. My son told me who is my son is producing me. He's also a great singer, writer. He and I co-wrote my next album, and it's going to be the best thing I've ever done. He told me about that award. He said, Dad, there's no one in the world that could deserve this award. (laughs) (laughs) And you. (laughs) Thanks, son. That's awesome. Yeah, so now talk a little about your son and your new album that's coming out. Your son is a singer and a musician as well. You must be proud about that. Yeah, well, you know, you always have mixed feelings because music is so insane. And today's market is... Basically, you know, I'm I'm not trying. I, I'm doing my next album because I have to do it because it's part of what's inside of me, and you know, you got to get it out and you have to finish it. And I, the songs are all short. I'm trying to keep them all around three minutes. There's a couple that are two fifty, two forty eight. Uh, pop, prog, what I call prog pop. Short okay. songs that have melodies that you can sing along with right away, but they've got this progressive structure and feel. There's a lot of Mellotron on it, uh, different sounds. I do like some string and vocal Mellotron arrangements. Like, and not unlike um, the Christmas song you mentioned. Right, uh, right. If you listen to that again, there, there are vocals that are happening that aren't me. That are like women and, and you know, like a choir kind of thing, but individual mm-hmm. vocals. That's all Mellotron. And I like put those together, you know, like did harmony notes with different voicing to kind of make that, uh, get that mood and feeling from. And then that, that's, that's going to be prominent on this, uh, this next album. There's a lot of interesting stuff. I'm, I'm just really so excited and I'm going crazy <laughs> trying to get, you know, to, trying to finish it. We've been, you know, we've had, you know, how life gets in the way. Yeah, of course. Everything you try to do. Uh, for a creative person, life still gets in the way, and you know that can mentally bend you out of shape yeah. for a time. Because it's, it's hard to get back into a groove, and we're now trying to. Uh, we're hoping that in the next three or four weeks, I can get back in the studio because we've got twelve tracks. All twelve tracks are tracked, are recorded. Okay, and it's just a matter they're all in different states of uh, you know being finished. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm planning on having a handful of uh, guests on it. Like I've got one song that is done, except for the bass part. And Kenny Aronson, if you're out there, I know you're on tour with the Yardbirds. Call me when you're back because <laughs> I want to send. You know, he already, I, he's going to do it for me. Oh, so awesome. it's kind of like a Brother Louis bass feel. The song nice. is not like Brother Louis. I, uh, I'm not, it's not my style, but the bass. And he's, I'm going to get him in there. I'm going to get some of the other guys. Steve Love talked to you about you know, putting a lead guitar in one of the tracks. Um, I have Ian McDonald, who was, by the way, I mentioned him before from King Crimson. He's the guy, he co-wrote In the Court of the Crimson King and oh. 21st Century Schizoid Man. And my band does do 21st Century Schizoid oh, Man. Awesome. But I, I don't think we're going to pull it out for the show, but it's always there at the end. If you get a, you know, a, a double encore. We might <laughs> but, um, but Ian was the, besides writing the songs, Ian McDonald was also the flautist, and sax, saxophone player in King Crimson on the mm. first two, three albums, which is some of the great, yeah, yeah. great stuff, horn stuff, in my opinion, and rock, pop, prog rock. Mm. Um, and uh, he's he's got a, a flute thing that he's going to play on the title track of oh, nice. my album. So it's going to be stuff like that where maybe not every, John Ford of the Straubs, of course, is going to be on there. Um, maybe I have, I'm, I'm trying to get him to play a George, a la George Harrison slide lead guitar part oh, nice. on one of my more up, more positive. Cause it's very apocalyptic. That's, that's <laughs> very, you know, today. I'll tell you one song is called be careful 
when you go outside. And this is like from viewing too much CNN, probably. <laughs> but lyrically, you know, something might fall out of the sky. <laughs> you know, and they, the lyrics go on like that. It's, it's like, awesome. uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty weird. So you but think you're going to have this great. album out by end of the year? You know, my son would say yes. I would say <laughs> we can have it out for, you know, the beginning of the year, early spring, and then we can start playing some of it live. I mean, I, I've already, I, I practiced it because I wrote everything on acoustic guitar or piano, okay. right? So I've made a, a mock set so I can, like, play through the whole thing. So I play the first four songs on guitar, I go to the piano and play two more songs oh, on nice. piano, then go back to another five songs on guitar, and I finish with the last song on piano. So in my head, I'm already performing it, but I've actually had a couple of rehearsals where, because, uh, you know, I perform, I perform nowadays, especially as, after I left the bass position, in stories and we got Kenny Aronson for brother Louie. You right. know, I became a front man totally, which was great because I really loved doing it. Yeah. You're and great, was, great this, front man. To this day, as, as at the show at Brighton bar, I will be the front man. But okay. when we start playing this next album, the parts, the songs that we do from this next album, I will be playing rhythm guitar and maybe keyboard piano on some of them also just you know in the middle of the front man set type thing but I, i've uh, rehearsed a couple of songs with them just say hey guys listen to this, this is, you know, follow these chords and, and man I'm, it sounds exciting you know, to hear it live it's gonna, I'm, i can't imagine with a full band playing that next album live it's gonna uh, be so exciting uh, for me and hopefully for fans yes yeah, so i'm excited i can't wait for this now so and i can't yeah. wait for friday september 23rd you're going to be at the brighton bar long branch new jersey i'm going to be up there front row ian it's been great talking to you uh it's right, awesome man. i learned a lot um i can't wait for the show and the new cd everybody friday september 23rd go out and check it out check out uh cool. machine dream records uh and everything about ian awesome one of the greatest lead singers front men of all time so also, uh, uh, anybody that's coming to the show if you you know if you have any memorabilia you'd like me to sign i am definitely gonna sweat all over you after the show <laughs> uh, right? awesome so uh, i'll send you an email ian with all the details and all that kind of stuff and uh we'll okay. see you on the 23rd please do. we're getting close too it's less than two weeks I'm yeah i know I'm really absolutely all right buddy see you all on right. the shore <laughs> great talking to you yeah, take care all right thanks okay, bye bye, bye, -bye. Hey, live from Dennis's house, only on 474 The Mix. And that was Ian Lloyd, lead singer of the stories. What a great guy. What a great singer. What a great song, Brother Louie, and so many other songs by them. Go check out everything. And remember, Friday, September 23rd, at his only area appearance at the Brighton Bar in Long Branch, New Jersey. And check us out, live from Dennis's house, 474 The Mix. We'll see you next time. Bye.